Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, Children's Lit on the iPad. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom on Tech Edge. And today I want to talk about children's literature on the iPad. And there are lots of ways to think about children's literature on the iPad. And I do want to say that while we're talking about children's literature on the iPad, we recognize that it is important for kids to interact with real books and live through them and go physically and interact, read, follow with their finger and all of that. That being said, the iPad can be a great addition or even the primary device on which kids read. And the advantages are uh, very, very clear. First of all, you can build a classroom library on devices that can go with you everywhere and that can share books with lots of kids. Kids can also read together in different ways. And, and this is really important, uh, children's literature on devices that is digital and I think especially on mobile devices has some potential at least for added value and that added value is in the ability of the device to read to you, the ability of the device to interact with the student and uh, add a layer of comprehension, uh, connect to different ideas, even provide um, definitions for words the kids don't understand, provide connections to other literature. So there's great opportunity to actually use the device to do the things that only mobile devices can do, and that is read everywhere and at any time. It's interact with other kids or interact with the author, and also have activities that help focus on the topic, on comprehension, on vocabulary. So let's start with iBooks. Uh, iBooks is native to the iPad and can be shared across multiple devices, but you can use the Kindle, and I do that often, and you can use the Barnes & Noble uh, app as well. They all work across devices, so you can read in multiple places. And this is uh, my bookshelf, and these are my PDFs, and I'm going to switch over to books. And when I look at books, I have a collection of books, all of them were free. You can see that if they have these generic uh, covers, there are usually older texts that have no copyright and have just been uh, arranged for consumption on the iBook store. That means they are available for free and there are a lot of classics there. Um, these are some sci-fi classics, but you can also find one like Treasure Island that kids can access for free. So there's no real reason to purchase those at all. You can have immediate access to all of the classics. Shakespeare's plays will be another example. But I want to actually share with you a series of books for early readers that was created by um, Freddie Hebert. And Freddie Hebert has been working in the field of education for many years. She's been constructing uh, informational texts and she's been publishing them and most recently on iBooks for free. So I'll give you an example. This is a book called Animals in Winter and it is a book about animals. It's got a lot of very nice photography attached to it and text that is appropriate for first, second grade in this case, and those are leveled carefully. So one of the things about children's literature is we want to make sure that we match our text to the readers we have uh, based on level, area of interest, and what they need as part of their curriculum. So this is a way to do that in informational text, and you can say that this is a book about uh, different animals and how they cope in the winter and you've got different animals, uh, including dogs that we dress up, geese, and so there's lots of uh, interesting text, and what is, again, when we talk about added benefit, the added benefit to this text, besides being free, freely available online, is that it does have some comprehension questions embedded into the book that will give you feedback at the end. So, it asks questions like, which one is it? And you can check your answer and it is correct, and let's try a different one, and this is a, 
will be incorrect, you get an X and you can correct your answer. So this is a way to interact with books. So when we talk about added benefit here, the added be uh, benefit or the added value to the book is the ability to have a comprehension check, the ability also inside the text to do things like highlight, note, but also define. So if we're looking for a definition, you can bring up the dictionary and it tells you exactly what it means and uh, origin so it can be more or less uh, depending on the grade level of the student that is in there uh, but lots of opportunities to do that so that's iBooks and again this is very similar to what you might use with a Kindle app or uh, with other apps that do exactly the same you can buy literature but you can also get lots for free it serves as a space and it saves them on the cloud even if you don't have them immediately on accessible on your device and if you have devices with limited memory that's a really good advice because you can accumulate quite a bit of a library on your device over time the second kind of uh, app is the single app that has one story in it. I've discussed multiple times Collins Big Book. I think it's a great app. It reads to the student. It also allows students to create, to compose on the app itself. But I really want to share right now Koya, which I think is still one of the best examples of an app that is available. And Koya really allows kids to interact with the story in multiple ways. And one of the things, the, one of the ways that it does it through is actually by taking in the kids' names and then entering them into the story. And in my case, it was actually both of my boys, my younger boys, who were part of this. And uh, we used both their names so they were an integral part of uh, the story. And they love that part. It's a simple, it's really a simple thing, but it really changes your whole disposition towards the text itself. And so you do that, and I'll make the music a little bit louder. Because it does have a soundtrack as well, which immediately takes you to a different place and time. So again, when we talk about an added value, here you start setting the theme, not just with words, but with the music as well. So this is the area where the story starts, and you can travel between areas just by rotating. Again, a way for kids to re-experience the book after first read in a different way to explore it in a non-linear way which is exciting you have to start in a linear way but after that it becomes a non-linear story so this is the first part and again just the arrangement and the art that goes with it uh, are spectacular this specific app does not actually read to students which is I in my mind a, a very good idea when you want them to interact with complex uh, literature, uh, which this one is. So this is not something you would use in first or second grade. This is from fourth grade and up. The story is complex, the ideas are complex, and uh, you can see that the art is exceptional as well. And that's a the common theme in, in good children's literature, and it's available here as well. So this is Koya, and again, it allows kids to interact it allows kids to actually go outside and take pictures of trees and other plants and incorporate them into a community that shares those kind of pictures. So there's lots of opportunities to work within this app. The last kind of app that I want to talk about are the ones that are series that you can get multiple stories on. And last, uh, a few weeks ago, I talked about Farfaria. So this time I'll go back to uh, Reading Rainbow which is another collection and again you can get up to five books as far as I can recall for free on Reading Rainbow after that you have to actually pay for the license if you can afford it if you have funds to do that I think it's a great source for lots of excellent uh, children's literature that uh, go in different direction whether it's incorporating math incorporating different cultures um, science and of course just fantastic storytelling so uh, this is Reading Rainbow.
So you can go to different zones within there. Action adventures and uh, magical tales is what my kids personally liked best. And you can see that there's a collection of stories there. You have a backpack where you can store your stories. So in your backpack, as you bring it up, different books show up. And these are books that my kids have chosen to read with me or on their own. And the first one is that has downloaded. And you can see that if you erase them from the machine, you can bring them back. They will download into your machine or you can exchange them. There's a book return here and you can throw them back. But if you go to one of those book, Keep Your Distance, you can see that this is a book that actually integrates math, which is a great way to introduce certain topics. And you can see that this is a, one of those stories. And it starts with the machine reading to the students. But they can also choose to read it on their own. So if you go up, you can do a few things. You can change it to read by myself, which means it will not read it for you. You can move to, you can hop to different pages so you don't have to start. If you've already started reading and you're in the middle of the book, you can go there. And you can also go back to your backpack. So you can navigate this fairly efficiently and be able to uh, interact with different, with different stories effectively just like you would with print literature. So this one is Reading Rainbow, Farfari is another example, and there are quite a few of them out there. Now, my advice is search for one that has stories in the range of the students you have and look for quality stories with quality artwork. That's why I like Reading Rainbow. I trust their choices. I know they've got some fantastic things in there. Other producers, it really depends on the quality. So spending some time knowing what's, what's acceptable to what you're doing, what would work well with your kids, would be a time well spent. Again, I would recommend Reading Rainbow, Limited Choices, Farfaria is another one, and that's a great one, and I think that they've got very good quality stories, so that's another one that would be one of the first ones I would get. So today we talked about children's literature and selecting the right format and how children's literature on devices can be a great complement to a strong use of children's literature in your classroom. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.